Yes, I am standing inside my laundry room and today is part two of what I call filter day. And it's a lot of things that you probably should be doing every six months to a year to your house to prevent problems further down the road. Let's go ahead and get started. I am standing inside my laundry room. Not my favorite room in the house, that's for sure. But my name is Rusty Nelson and welcome. Today is part two of what I call Filter Day. And each year I update this. A lot of these from uh, updates from suggestions you guys gave me, things you do around your house. And most of these things really tend to become preventative maintenance. Now the first part, which I highly suggest you watch, is from the outside of the house, looking at things like sprinklers and hot water heater filters and that type of thing. And then this is part two, which I come inside the house and I go through a lot of the things in the house. Now, I promise you there's going to be a lot of things on here that you, <laughs> there you go. I didn't know that because it's a lot of stuff that I didn't know. And that's one big thing. I got to put this, this disclaimer. I am not an expert in any of these things, but I've done a lot of reading on these and um, I'm just kind of passing along to you as I learn. And also, thanks to you folks putting stuff down in the comments of things you do all year, uh, I'm adding them onto these and passing them along to everybody else. Now, I, uh, I'm i going to go around and I'm going to have some things in here uh, that we may talk about, kind of like surge protectors or something like that. And these various items I'm going to put down below and you can order them on Amazon. I do get a little small, itty bitty pennies, barely pay for the electricity to do this, but it sure helps this uh, channel go along. You don't get charged anymore. And anytime you go through one of those links, no matter what you buy, I get a little bump and uh, I may get to buy myself a beer at the end of the week, but that's about it. We are going to start inside the laundry room and then we're gonna quickly move around to, to see a lot of things. Now, Two things that I'm not going to show you how to do right now is the dryer vent. I'm going to do a separate video with that. And I will also do a separate video of descaling of the tankless water heater outside. But let's just get started in here. And where you will see, you'll see sometimes I have different clothes on or I look a little different. That's because what I've done is taken the things that I'm using from last year and I'm putting them in this, in this video, and then I'm just adding to them where they make sense. And this one, since it's only my second year, there's a lot of things that you guys have suggested and a lot of things that I read about that I added on. So let's go ahead and get started right here with this baby. Now I know everybody knows this right here, your lint. Also you need to, they suggest once a year, you have a professional go clean your line out and make sure that, and I, I think that's kind of important in the beginning to have somebody come do that after the first year, I would guess, because you have new carpet in there, you've started washing a lot of new towels and that type of thing, bedding, and that produces a lot of lint, so you may wanna, and you may wanna not put that off for a year and give it a shot and see what happens. Down low down here, right by where the filter is, and you just wanna get, this screwdriver, now I have a towel put down here. I've never done it with this machine, so I have no idea what to expect. Just flip that off. You wanna put, put a pan under it like that. And it has a little spout. And right in here, you should be able to twist this. And you can actually control the water slightly by how quickly you unscrew this. And there starts to come some of the water. Uh, hopefully there's not too much. I can't remember whether they said there could be a quart or a pint, but if I have to, at least I can stop this. By not taking it all the way out, I can stop this, you know, start it up again if I have to empty the tray out. Well, there it is. As you can see, there's not too much in there. And it's not really a fine filter, but there is some chunks of stuff that came out. All there is to that. Now, there was quite a few turns in that to get it all the way in there. And clean that up. And that's about it for the washer. As you know, there's a, a lint a thing in the dryer, but you kind of change that every single time. So on to the next project.
Now, from down there in the filter area back up to here, something that I put on my wash and dryer, because let me tell you, these suckers are expensive. And being a gadget guy, of course, I had to buy the one that had all the gadgets on it. So these babies talk to each other and this tells us what kind of dryer setting to have when you put it over there. It chimes in when my laundry's done. And trust me, for the bachelor guy, it saved me a lot of smelly, nasty laundry. But anyway, something that I do put on, that I did put on here is these suckers right here. Now yeah, let's take a look at them and I will put the links to these down below. These are actually surge protectors that are meant for washers, dryers, refrigerators, that type of thing. And you just simply put them on there and then plug them in. They take a second because they have a timer on them to set themselves. And speaking of that, I will, I'm will i gonna jump out here really quick in a second. I'll show you one of the, a couple of the other surge protectors I use because uh, we still gotta come back in here. But some of the surge protectors actually have um, uh, lights that supposedly say when they're bad. Now, the thing is, whether you know something about surge protectors, I don't know a, a, a ton of stuff about them, but you'll hear about jewel ratings. And when I did research on these, I tried to find ones that had higher jewel ratings so that it would help protect the electronics and everything. The other thing you need to know about these is most of these surge protectors, if you get hit by lightning, you know, there's been a couple of lightning strikes down here in the villages. We are the capital, lightning capital of the world. And uh, there's been a lot of lightning strikes. Now, direct hits, there's nothing you can do about that. But what these surge protectors will help do is as there surges back and forth, it will actually help your electronics to last a little longer. And um, like I said, it, 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 from low, low voltage to over voltage. I also, if you watch the outdoor one, I had the electric company put a surge protector outside. Are they foolproof? Absolutely not. If you got a near strike, it's probably not going to do it. These probably aren't going to help. But I do unplug these. If I'm gone for any period of time, I unplug these. And I'm just talking about a couple of days I unplug them. But also, let me go out and show you just a couple of these other surge protectors. And I have these all over the house. And I put them on uh, many of my items. I'll just show you two here. Like I said, they will be in the links. And I'll also show a picture of them here, here, and here. At the end of my sink, I have one of these on here. I have a lot of electronics, if you can imagine. Cameras, batteries, that type of stuff get plugged in here. And this is a surge protector on here. And I'm not sure if I mentioned it before, but a lot of the manufacturers of these actually say two to three years, you should probably replace them. So if you got, if you got a surge protector that's over three years old, uh, you probably need to replace it and get a new one. Uh, most of these, I've done research on these that I've had that, that I bought, and they're actually pretty high jewel rating. Another place you may not think about putting them, and I'll show you right over here, we'll jump over to the couch. I have a uh, couch table right here and my couch is a recliner. So I have one of these and I think I already showed you a picture of it, but if not, I'll stick it right here somewhere. But this is Amazon. This is rated up to, I think, 4,500 joules. And so I plug this in. I also have one for my TV and all that stuff over there. In fact, anything, I really have anything electronic. I have something like this or like the other ones that it is actually plugged into. Here's something you may not think about, yeah, we haven't even left the washroom yet, is if you go along away for an extended period of time or you're gone for a little while, and also every once in a while, if you don't use a specific sink, say in a guest room or a shower or anything like that, you may want to flush them every once in a while. And also in these type of drains, you know, I think they call it the rain catcher where it dips like that. There's a reason for that. And if you keep water in there, that keeps exhaust coming up from the sewer and back up. So every once in a while, just go in and turn on the water and run it a little while because you want to keep that, that drain area filled with water where it dips down like that. Uh, okay, let's get out of the washroom. We'll move out into the kitchen. In the kitchen, here we go. Now there might be some filters you guys know about and there may be some you don't. I'm betting there's a couple that you don't. But I'm gonna 
put the cam, push the camera right in here, and I'm going to show you because there's grease filters underneath here that you need to change, um, and not necessarily change those, but they can be washed. And then there's also another filter up here that a lot of people have no idea that it's up there, so I'm going to show you that. Before I do, just a reminder: if you got a Keurig. They tell you that you should do that every couple of months. I think there is a clean filter light or something like that on it. Also, I've heard people say that if you have a filter on your house, you really don't need it on the Keurig. That remains to be seen. I'll try to find out that information for you in a little bit. If so, I'll put it at the end of the video. Here we go. We're going to show you where these filters are. Right now we're looking underneath of the microwave and there are these small silver grates that you see right here. And you just push those back a little bit and they almost fall out. And this is kind of what they look like. They're really clear. How can you tell that they're dirty? You can feel the grease on there. Obviously I eat out more than I cook in, that's for sure, because there's absolutely no grease on there. And you'll also start to see a little bit of discolor in it, but just put them back up there and they are gonna feel actually like they're loose and you just kind of pull it back and they're, they're actually, pretty loose up there. There's another one right here. Sometimes people will have one that go all, a single one that goes all the way across here. But let me show you upstairs where there's a different filter and we'll have to do a little screwdriver work to get to that one. Right now I'm looking down on top of the microwave and there's actually right up here and you can actually see it right through there. There's a charcoal filter that needs to be actually replaced. I don't know, this is not a, is not one that you can actually wash out, but I'll show you how to take this off and what it looks like. Just so you can see exactly where I am right now, I flip the camera over to the other side and I'm gonna take off these three screws right here. these up here. Now, this thing's a little tricky unless you know what you're doing. Instead of just popping it right off like you think, you actually have to push it this way a little bit and then kind of jiggle it off. And that's how it comes off of there. And then right here is the filter on this one. Now, some of them are different and actually some of them actually have a door and that's what it looks like right there. It's a charcoal type filter. And you go ahead and just uh, replace that. And it tells you, has a little sign right there that that is the upside and that's the side you wanna put up. Sometimes they're a little tricky to go in there and sometimes they just flop in there and they feel a little loose, but you gotta make sure you kinda get it in the slot. And like I said, sometimes it's a little tricky. <laughs> And there we go. All right, you're now inside the refrigerator. When I open this up, you look for the little guy that's running around turning that light on. Did you see him? Did you see the little guy? Did you see the little guy that turned the refrigerator light on? So now you're inside my refrigerator. And if I turn this around, the next filter is right here. And this, I've also been told a lot of people don't bother to do that if they have one of the whole house filters. But I'll tell you one thing, if you have one of these GEs, you probably did not get a plug. If you're not going to use this filter and change it out, you actually have to put a plug up there and you can call GE parts and tell them you have to have the model number and they will actually send you the plug for free. But this filter that goes in here, that's it right there, and it goes back in there. They're kind of expensive little boogers, but this little light right here on this, on this GE right here, the filter status, will start glowing orange, I believe, first, and then it turns to red when you gotta change it out. So that's that filter. I bet you thought we were all over with. Nope. The dishwasher, and a lot of people never think of this one. But actually, if you think about it, there's a lot of stuff that actually your dishwasher kind of chunks up, old food and stuff like that. You actually have two filters right here. It's kind of a larger strain filter. And then if you turn this right, oh, look at that. Before I even got started, check that out. 
screw came out of somewhere, so that might be worth checking out. There is a filter right here that's kind of a fine mesh filter. As you can see, there's already some stuff in that that needs to be cleaned out, so I'll take that, rinse that out. You can see this, this part comes out like this on this right here, and it gives you a chance you can go ahead. There's a bunch of junk in there. I think you'll see after I get done cleaning this out. Yeah, definitely, you can see how, how clear that is right there. And just as simple as that, put that back in and lock that down, and that kind of locks them both down. Can't quite see where it came from, so I'm gonna have to hunt that down because it's a brand new dishwasher and screws shouldn't be coming out of it. I'm gonna jump back into her refrigerator here for a second because this is one of those added on things this year but also if you have external filters like you know you have some of the nova three filter system or other ones or water softener it's kind of good if you get it onto this schedule mine's june till and then my next six months is december so it kind of reminds me of the holiday of my birthday in June, and then the holidays as I go through those and kind of change those things out. But one other thing you wanna do, if you have one, and if you don't have one, you probably should have one, is your fire extinguisher. Wanna make sure that is in the green. Also, um, expired things. We are not getting any younger, that's for sure. So to get sick from food, food poisoning and stuff. It is rough even when I was in my 20s. Jump in the refrigerator, take a second. I don't care what they say, sriracha doesn't last forever. And if you have any of those little olives for your martinis or any of those types of condiments, get rid of them and go out and buy some new ones, buy some fresh stuff. But check all those things and also check in your pantry to make sure you're gonna be surprised, you're gonna go through there and you're gonna find some old stuff. Get rid of it. <sighs> All right, we're still not out of the kitchen yet because we're gonna to get to one of my other things which is kinda of like my pet peeve and we're gonna move right over here to do this. Welcome to Rusty's Kitchen. Yeah, that's right. I. I've actually been asked during the holidays to bring my knife sharpener and come sharpen people's knives. This is not that hard. You can get an electric knife sharpener. I'll put some links down below. Hang on one second. Get a couple more things here and talk about these real quick. So this is an electric knife sharpener. There's not much to this. It's this easy. It gives you guides. You just drag this through three or four times. There's instructions in there. And I promise you, you're gonna come up with some really sharp knives. Now, this is, I use this for touch up. I'll put a link to something like this down below. And um, this is just a fine and a coarse. And if I want, I'll just take and go like this a couple of times and then use this. Now most people think that this, th these are all sharpeners. This is called a steel, and many of you have these, but you're not quite sure what they're for. There are two different types. There's a sharpening steel, and then there's a honing steel. And this is a honing steel because I have, you know, I have these sharpeners, but all you do is just run, and I can feel right away that that is like that, and then even that will help to uh, make your knives a little bit sharper. But one of these, or even one of these touch-ups like this, uh, works really well. Just go through and sharpen all your knives. Um, you're a lot better off with a sharp knife than you are with a dull knife because you're gonna find out you don't have to push down very hard. But there you go, knife sharpening. Hallelujah, we are finally out of the kitchen and out into the hallway, and I guess paired up with a fire extinguisher, you can also think of your smoke and CO2 detectors and that type of thing. You should be changing the batteries out. They actually say every six months, I do mine every year. Put fresh batteries in. There's actually um, two different ways you can do this. You can do it yourself, 
or you can call the safety department and I will list their number right here and they will actually come out and switch out your smoke detectors. Now, here's the thing is basically if you can't climb up on a ladder, you can't do it yourself, that's fine. They had also, it is a um, kind of like a same day service. They can't guarantee exactly what time it is. It's from eight to five. So you kind of have to be there most of the day. And you also have to have brand new nine volt batteries if that's what it takes. Now, a lot of them take that, but if you've bought aftermarket or whatever, you have to have that specific type of battery because they don't bring batteries with them. They just have somebody to come out that'll help and assist and put the new batteries in. They will not do anything else but that. That's what they're there for is to just change out the batteries. Also, if you seems like you have a defective alarm, they will also come out and replace that. But with that said, you have to have that specific smoke alarm. And speaking of that, let me grab one of these smoke alarms. Actually, I'm just gonna pull this one right off of here. And we can demo it this way. I don't even have to do this. Go up there and do it. So on the back of here, let's see. On the back of here, you're going to find a small date right down there. And the smoke alarms are actually good for about 10 years, warranted for 10 years. They say they need to be replaced from 10 years from the date of installation. So I take whatever sooner. This was built about a year before I actually um, got the house. This just so happens to be a CO2. So what, what you do is you just open this up, that's on these, and in there you'll see there's a nine volt battery. Now, I will tell you that sometimes, and especially doing this backwards, these tend to be weird to get out. You have to kind of pull it out like that and then pull that. Now this door is meant so that it won't shut until you get another battery in there. I suggest when you pull it out, look and see which is where, whether the positive or negative. This is the negative, the larger one. And you'll be able to look in there. You probably won't be able to see it, but you look in there and you can see one of those holes is larger. Now, if you're up there, it's a little bit harder to do. And I mean, I know I brought the battery with me here somewhere. Um, There we go, brand new Duracell battery. And just take that and slide it back in and you have to kind of force it in there. As you put newer batteries in, it gets a little bit easier to put in and then just shut it and that's it. It'll beep and it's ready to go back up again. Or if you haven't taken it off, you can just close that and you're done. But I have five in my place. You'll usually find one in each bedroom, hallway, and actually, believe it or not, out in the living room and stuff, I don't have one out there, but they're just in the hallways and bedrooms. So that's it. Make sure you do those. And like I said, I'll put the number down there below. You can call them up. They're really nice folks and they'll be able to answer whatever questions you have. But get that done. Well, at least we got out of the hallway and we're into the, I guess we're in the bathroom now. For, <laughs> think about this for a second. Toothbrush. You know, if you have an electric toothbrush, get rid of your old brush and put on a new one. If you have the regular manual toothbrushes, I'll tell you what, you want to maybe want to converse with your dentist first, but these electric toothbrushes made all the difference in, in the world for me. And I don't, I don't mind pimping this right here. It will make a big difference in your teeth and I'll tell you why. I can easily tell from going from a manual toothbrush to an electric toothbrush that by the end of the day, my teeth were a lot cleaner. Now, I did an experiment with my dentist. We went from the Braun to the Sonicare. They're both really good, don't misunderstand me. But at the end of a six month test, there was definitely, my teeth were a little bit better with a Braun. Say what you will, but that's the way it worked out for me. Also, in here, your medicine cabinet, folks, 
I may have said it already, but get rid of your expired medications. You, you, especially if you've got grandkids running around. You don't want those things and dispose of them properly, but uh, you don't want those medicines sitting around, especially if you have grandkids. And I know that as we get older, we tend to have some uh, more exotic uh, medicines, you know, that we've taken for pain or whatever, and we probably want to get rid of them. I think we're done in the bathroom. Unless you guys got other stuff, put it down in the comments because you always come up with some brilliant stuff that I don't know about that I may put in next year's filter day. Moving on. So far, that was uh, a lot of stuff, but I'm telling you right now, after you do it the first year, you just do it one day, you get it over with, and take you and your honey, if you got one or whatever, go out to dinner. If the two of you, if it's something the two of you can do, boy, it goes really fast and you're done and you'll feel a lot better over the next year, six months or whatever. And anyway, I am going to pour myself a little adult beverage and congratulate myself. But there are some other things you want to think about and that is doctors. If you're over 65, you're on Medicare, you want to make sure you get your wellness check scheduled. If you're under 65, it'll be a basic yearly physical and you I want to do that and I kind of schedule these things all around each other. I definitely don't want to do it on my December round because I wouldn't look so good on my blood tests during all the holidays. Also, eye doctors, folks, we're getting older. There's a lot of stuff that can happen with our eyes that we'd never see and it's preventable, some of this stuff early on, so you want to make sure you do that. Oh. And that's about it. Go see your regular doctor. Enough of that stuff. Yeah. Anyway, we are done. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Make sure you watch part one. If you have stuff to contribute, put it down in the notes down below or the comments rather. And I will take a look at it. Maybe we can see whether we can put it in next year. I'll keep redoing these every year. I will put this year's um, or this year's, this schedule's the indoor schedule right where my hand's going like a, a flying bird over there. And uh, you should be able to take a picture of that with your phone. For the schedule one outside, um, you, you can watch that video towards the end is also a list that you can take a picture of with your phone to cover all this stuff. Anyway, thanks again for joining me. I really appreciate it. Like I said, just take these days and do it. It'll really help out and prevent any further damage in your house and it'll keep things running efficiently, which is really, really, really important. You'll love it. Thanks a lot. Cheers. And I hope to either see you here again on YouTube or see you down here in the villages. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful filter day now that you're all done.